Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. Today, we have a lot of interesting stuff to discuss. But first, my question of today is what part of the world are you watching this video from? Let me know in the comment section down below. And let's dive right into our first topic of today, which is the Ripple v SEC lawsuit and most specifically, a settlement. Because oh, 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 are things about to get interesting. For the last couple of days, I've been telling you guys that a settlement is closer than ever. And I've not been lying about that. I believe most attorneys and most people watching right now would also agree with me that the SEC has not been making any sense for a god freaking long time. But the last couple of days, they've actually lost their mind. Actually. Because they're right now filing for an extension of discovery, which basically means... They have got frick all. They have got nothing. They're trying to still fetch something in this current phase of the lawsuit to still make a point or to still try something, but they don't really have too much. And that really brings us to the point of settlement. Could it be coming? What would both sides want? And what are the odds basically? Well, the odds of course are impossible to measure because even though Ripple might want it, even though the SEC might want it, it might still not come to a conclusion because, well, both sides have something which they want, and you guys get it, right? You guys get that even though you might want to sell something and the other party might want to buy something, there's still a million and one reasons why the transaction might not go through. And exactly that is the situation here with the SEC as well. Even though we know from both sides what they want, it's 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 kind of difficult. Now, Jeremy Hogan made a video on this, and I've talked about this for a very long while now, about what both of these sides would want, and it's actually quite logical. So, in the simplest words, the SEC out of a settlement would want to get some money. That's the easiest way I'd like to put it, and so that no more violations could be made. So in the simplest terms, as I've, as I've already just described in the simplest terms, whatever, they want some 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 fine to be paid by Ripple side so they can, of course, pay their salaries. And they don't want the violations to continue because, well, people are being hurt. From Ripple side, obviously, they'd want some clarity and they'd want to continue their operation. In the easiest fashion there, or to explain on that easy and fashion, they want to make sure that they can still continue on to be Ripple, and they also want to make sure that they're not violating some stuff in the future, and it's, it's all just very logical, whatever they'd want. I don't think there's too much of, a, of an attention that you have to, uh, to put in there. So, where's the dilemma? Why is it taking so long, and why aren't they concluding? Well, I would say that they aren't concluding because Ripple thinks, most likely, that, they, that if the phases continue, they can actually win flawlessly. If it goes to summary judgment, the next phase, it could literally be so that the SEC is going to fully lose because Ripple is going to be granted one of their main defenses. For example, fair notice or any one of the other ones. It's just about the idea that the Ripple might completely win flawlessly without paying a fine or without actually agreeing to anything that the SEC has to offer. And from the SEC side, of course, obviously too, the SEC might think here that if they were to negotiate right now, which they obviously are already doing, I mean, you're always negotiating at least a little bit. Um, the, it, it might be so that if they go through the next phase, the SEC might just have a flawless win. And even though they don't really have much, the whole discovery phase is here to dig up dirt. And I believe the SEC is is not fully of the opinion that they can get more mostly because they've been hiding documents right now within this discovery phase they've been trying to extend time and they've just been doing some fishy stuff specifically the last couple of days which which points me towards the idea that nah they don't really have too much going in for the future for the next summary judgment phase where you basically discuss everything that you've gathered in the discovery phase so I'm, I'm personally thinking it's mostly on Ripple side of things or because they're both just trying their best to get some extra leverage to come to a partial settlement or an entire settlement. It might also be because both parties don't under, understand the other party's perspective well enough just quite yet. But then again, that's always to be disputed. Because if you think about it, Ripple knows exactly what the SEC is doing. Why they're doing it? Nobody really knows, but you're not never going to find that out, right? Unless they were to get those documents what the SEC has been hiding. From the SEC side, they know exactly what Ripple has been doing. But then again, they also kind of don't because otherwise, why would you have, have, have sued them, right? Or was there a different agenda in the back end of things? It's a really difficult situation and this will keep people speculating for settlement. Then again, we have no exact basis to say it's going to happen or not. 
all we can do is wait it out. And I've told you guys about this before. We're going to reaffirm that if you haven't made an account on Bybit just quite yet, a link is down below. If you're from the US, use a VPN. A VPN is always nice if you're, for example, an avid Netflix watcher. You can actually, you know, switch up those those countries and watch different shows on there. Might be nice. Just a little addition. But yeah, a VPN link is down below too for anybody in the US or maybe even UK. Um, but Bybit is the one I use the platform where you can leverage trade, for example, on XRP. And the fun part is you can actually trade in USDT or in XRP, meaning that you can use, for example, 100 XRP to actually buy 1,000 XRP worth or even, I believe, 2,500 XRP. You can use 100 to buy 2,500 XRP worth and, and, and trade with that basically, which is a really cool feature, really cool thing. Now, what I'm going to be doing, as I've told you guys before, is actually buy in the moment, all right, the moment we get some sort of settlement because I believe it's going to be really profitable. Also, I just made a video talking about this little double bottom that was formed here. I still confirm that this could be a nice little trade to actually buy in right here and take our way upwards. I'm just reaffirming that it might be a nice one. Again, also following along with the trend line on the four hour here, making a double bottom here. It could definitely be a nice one to just quickly test out, have a stop loss a little bit below. What is the accuracy? What is the certainty? Pretty small because it's not following my normal strategy, but I'm just looking at with you guys at this opportunity here and just thinking it's, hey, you know, pretty, looking pretty damn good. So regarding the settlement, what are the percentages? We have none. How likely is it to happen? Well, very, pretty likely, I would say, mostly on the basis that it just looks logical. Then again, both parties have to come to a conclusion, which might be extremely difficult knowing that they both don't trust each other too much. And since they both maybe want too much from the other side, then again, if you're talking about a fine that the SEC wants, Ripple doesn't really mind that too much. Then again, they might not want to admit that they're doing something wrong. They might not want to admit in at all to those fines because that means if they accept it, that again, you've done something which which you need to pay a fine for. Ripple might just want to kind of pull this all the way through. Then again, Ripple might also not want to take that risk. And again, you guys understand why it's so difficult to make some conclusions on that one. Then again, if we get one conclusion, I'm going to be trading this and it's going to be a multi-million dollar trade. I've told you guys about that before. Then Benoit Couré. I'm assuming it's his official Twitter, but I'm not too sure about that. Um, I'm not too sure about that at all, actually. Uh, I'm assuming so, though. All right. ben Benoit Couré is right now working for the BIS. Has actually worked for the ECB before. While the highlight of today's Group of Seven finance ministers meeting was their historic agreement on a global minimum corporate tax rate they also pledged to work together on central bank digital currency cbdc Ooh, right Ooh, that is uh that is really interesting g7 finance ministers and sec yellen have released a statement on agreements around building a strong sustainable and balanced and inclusive global economic recovery read the full text here this statement outlines agreements on global economy recovery, economic recovery, transformative efforts to tackle climate change and biodiversity loss, continued support to low income and vulnerable countries, and shaping a safe and prosperous future for all. What it doesn't say too much in there is the CBC part of things, but hey, that's a really nice thing to see. Why? You might miss you might have missed out on this, but Ripple is one of the core parts of CBDCs. And one fun thing is that this individual right here who tweeted this out, Benoit Couré, part of the BIS Bank of International Settlements. It actually follows uh, Brad Gullinghouse on Twitter, the CEO of Ripple, and he's worked for the ECB before, which has connections to Ripple. We've talked about that before. Bank of France actually talked about the official Europe CBDC on Ripple's platform, as an example. Things are, are, are closing in. I mean, one of the fun things is if Ripple gets this clarity that they've been so wanting... These connections might also be a lot easier. Then again, if you sort of think about it too, Benoit Couré, all these guys are already following Ripple. They're already connected to Ripple, even though they did not have the clarity before. The treasurer, one of the previous treasurers, is working for Ripple on the board. You cannot convince me that they're doing something wrong. If they're doing something wrong, you cannot convince me that the system didn't want it that way. Because I firmly stand by my opinion that whatever they're doing, it's not going to affect them too much, even if they were doing something wrong. Even if they're going to get fined for it, it's not going to affect them regardless of what's going to happen. Otherwise, all these people wouldn't have joined and all these connections would not have been met. If you think it's a big fraud company, you're not going to have a connection with them. And specifically this man here, you're not going to follow the CEO of that company unless you're trying to investigate him, you know, unless you're trying to think if he's doing something wrong. One thing I just forgot to show you was Justin B here who asked some questions. Jeremy, great video. As per usual, I have two follow-up questions. One, 
Considering that the SEC's case seems to be imploding, why would Ripple even want to settle? And to what happens and how likely is it if Ripple wins by virtue of summary judgment? So these are two questions which a lot of you guys must be having too. Even though I can easily answer them, here's Jeremy Hogan who answered. He said, parties always should settle if the terms make sense to them because it's their only chance to 100% certainty control their own destiny. Two, I think Ripple has one strong and one very strong argument at summary judgment. I like those odds, but truly, no one can tell you who will win. And that's the truth. I mean, the SEC is a government agency. You might say bias. I'm not sure if there's bias, but then again, it's already been such a strange situation that you should not underestimate the SEC's power. You should not underestimate the SEC's case of things, because even though it looks so logical to us that Ripple's going to win, it's still a government agency who decided to sue a company the judge might just side with that because there's some logic in the bureaucracy sense of things, right? Following the logical perspective, the SEC has no chance, but maybe, maybe following the books, they do have one. And also, why should Ripple settle? Logically, if there's just a fine to be paid, if they have to admit they were doing something wrong, but now they have the full clarity and now they can continue on, well, it's it's a good deal, right? It's a really, really good deal. So, yeah, um, they don't have to risk it then on the second part of things where they might completely lose. So that is my opinion on things as well. Moving on, this one is interesting. Kamal Best posted the math behind a four-figure XRP. So I actually wanted to dedicate an entire video to this, but let me quickly give you guys the, the rundown. It is basically just going over the different sizes the market needs to get for certain values of XRP. For example, if it gets to 100, look, they just have a whole calculation as to why it could get to $105 trillion, for example. If we divide it over all the XRP coins, there's $1,050 per coin. This, by the way, means that all Ripple's escrow coins will also be in circulation then. But that's basically the idea. Um, could be doubled then again because of only being 50 billion coins out there. But this will place one XRP at $1,000.50 following this analogy of basically the global let's actually go over it a little bit we need the global financial market size 870 trillion according to the world economic forum we now need to work out 87 percent of this to give us how much iso 2022 will manage 757 trillion and then we need to find 14 percent to give the potential market cap for xrp why exactly 14 percent well i think he's got that figured out in his little story right here he thinks xrp will have a 14 percent rather than nine percent equal share in all of this We'll talk about this in a separate video, right? In, in pure detail, it's coming up later today uh, because it's actually quite interesting. I think a lot of you guys would like it. Then again, what is the legitimacy behind this? It's 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 interesting. Let's put it like that, all right? It's, it's definitely interesting, but it might put a lot of you guys out of your misery of not knowing why people are talking about these high-ass price predictions. But then again, we'll talk about that in just a second. Take care, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all again in another one coming out later today.